Hello, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, and today we're going to talk about installing cumulative updates for SharePoint 2016. So, with um, in the video series, right, this is going to be video number five. In video four, we finished installing SharePoint 2016, but we haven't configured the farm yet. That'll be video six. So here in video five, I just want to take a minute to talk about installing cumulative updates, uh, when you should, when you shouldn't, and kind of why we're doing it. And so to that end, what's happened, right, is we've installed all the bits, so SharePoint's on our box, we haven't configured anything yet. And so if we go ahead and put the cumulative updates or any other patches on right now, then when we go to build the farm, you know, as part of building the farm, we're going to run the farm configuration wizards and all those fun pieces, and then I'll just suck these new bits right into the fold and we'll be at the latest version. If you were to do the install and then the configure, and then the cumulative updates, what would happen is you'd have to do all of the updates a second time through. Uh, so you'd end up running Farm Wizard twice and things like that, and it can take a little bit longer. So this is the path of least resistance, if you will. Now when it comes to cumulative updates uh, for SharePoint, I don't recommend you just put them on because they're out there. right? So if you go and look, you know, there's all types of updates for SharePoint. You're like, yeah, I'll just put this one on out there. Life is grand. With service packs and things like that, you know, those make a lot of sense because they're tested and vetted really well. Um, so you probably want to roll those in the fold as they come out, but there's no service packs for SharePoint 2016 at this point. Um, we just have cumulative updates. And what cumulative updates are, are they are updates that Microsoft releases roughly on a bi-monthly basis that address immediate concerns that they want to get out in the field and fixed right away. So they are, you know, someone reports a problem, it's fixed working with Microsoft, and then they take that update and they throw it in a bucket, they grab all of those once every month or so, or every other month, and then they will um, make a, a, a cumulative update and then release that out to us. Now they do do some testing, but they don't just they don't do the full regression testing. There's not a formal process, right? I mean, if you look at service packs, they're tested for three or four months. Cumulative updates might be tested for three or four days. So that's the reason we don't want to put them on. The only time that you generally want to put on cumulative updates is a, if you can say, all right, I have problem X and cumulative update Y fixes it, right? If you have that exact scenario, that's a great opportunity to put on a cumulative update. Or in the case of the videos we've been working through, we're building a new farm so we don't have to worry about breaking any existing behavior and we're just doing some testing. So this is a great opportunity for us to put on a cumulative update. Keep in mind with SharePoint, there is no way to remove an update. So that's why we always want to be really careful, right? If you you roll out this July update or the June update and it takes down your production farm because you know there's some incompatibility in a feature you're using that there's regression in the cumulative update and this has happened to a lot of people over the years um, the only way you can go back is to restore uh, from a previous backup there is no uninstalling updates there is no unrevving your farm so you want to be really uh, careful about putting on cumulative updates all right have I scared you enough good so if you want to look into cumulative updates, the best way that I can recommend to do that is I'm going to send you off to uh, good old Todd Clint's blog. So if you go to www.toddclint.com and out here on his website, you're going to see that there is a link to the SharePoint 2016 builds. As much as it pains me to say, this is the easiest place for me to find all the updates, so this is what I use. So I'm going to click on 2016 builds. And so then Todd, what he does, he keeps a list, we'll scroll down a little bit, of all of the different build versions of uh, SharePoint and the cumulative updates that get you there or the service packs or infrastructure updates or whatever other type of patches Microsoft might release. Uh, so Todd makes them available and so what you're going to see is he's going to give you the version number here, uh, you know, kind of a generic name for it and then, you know, links off to the KBs and the downloads and then Todd also, if he knows of any bugs or issues with it, he will go ahead and uh, put those out here, right? So if he finds out that, hey, the uh, may update, you know, catches your server on fire, he's going to put that in his notes and regressions. Um, also, if you want to keep up with these better, if you're on the Twitter, right, you can do, you can follow SP2016 builds, and so Todd only uses that Twitter account to announce new cumulative updates. He doesn't spam it, doesn't do any of that type of stuff. That's a good way to get updated when uh, things change. Alright, so in this example, what I wanted to do um, is I want to install these June updates. And the reason I went with the June updates is because the July ones literally just came out a couple days ago, so I haven't really vetted them or tested them at all. And so we know the June updates have been stable to this point. We actually don't know of any issues that they've introduced. 
So um, in this build series, we're going to put the June updates in. But if you're watching this video, you know, two years from now, go find the latest updates and figure out which ones make the most sense for you. But if you're doing it today, you know, what am I, like July 25th, 2016, I'm actually putting on the June 2016 updates. And you're going to see there's three updates here. So we've got the June 2016 update for this KB, another June 2016 update on this KB, and then if you're running the Office Online server, which, or, you know, aka the Office Web Apps, which we're not doing right now on our farm, then there'd be a third, uh, third update available here. So then what I do is I go out here, I would download, or go to the download link, and then wait patiently. And then it's going to say, hey, here's the update, and you can choose which language you want to download it in. So there's that one. And if we back up, and we go to this June update right here, we can say download, and you'll see something very similar, right? And what I did, because once again, we don't like to watch things happen, um, if we go over here to my C drive under install, you will see, oh, that's not what I want, I'm sorry. If you go to C drive, and so if we go over here to my C drive, we'll see on my install folder, I have the June 2016 CU, and so I've actually downloaded those two updates and made those ready. So, saved you all the steps of watching. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close my browser. Yep, we'll close all the tabs. And so here we're just going to run these updates. So I'm going to do the STS, uh, that one. So we're going to double click it. Hey, you want to run this? Yes, I do. Click here to accept the license terms. Those look great. So say continue, and so now it's going to extract the update out of that uh, file, and then go ahead and apply that off to my SharePoint farm. And while that runs, I'll go ahead and hit pause. All right, so now you can see the install is finished. So we're going to click OK, and as you probably guessed, we're going to double click on this other one, and a very similar patterns about to emerge. We're going to click yes. We're going to read those license terms and accept those and say continue. And so then same type of deal, right? It's going to decompress the files and then install the different ones that it needs. Um, I did want to point out real quick before I hit pause, you'll notice that these files are very large and what you're going to see is cumulative update files just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the reason for that is because they are truly cumulative updates, right? So the June update's got the May updates in it. When we get to the July, it's going to have the May and the June updates. So they're just going to continue to get larger and larger. So as you're planning out your timing for this type of stuff and um, just trying to get a better handle on it, know that it is normal that these are very large. You can also see that this one completed in, what, the 30 seconds that I was jibber-jabbering. The other uh, one, it took about seven minutes. So just to give you some time updates. All right, so we'll hit OK there. We're all done here. And so if you were installing cumulative updates on a running farm right now, now you'd need to run Configuration Wizard to kind of sync those into your farm, which would then take your environment down. So you wouldn't want to do that during the middle of the day, especially if it's production. Um, but because we are doing this as part of the install process, right? Video four, we got everything installed. So video five here, we've patched. Now in video six, we're going to work through doing the uh, actual running the config wizard and building out the new farm. And the good news is, is we'll get it all built with uh, the June cumulative update. So when our farm is up and running, we'll be fully patched and ready to go. All right. As always, if you like the content, please uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. There's also the link in the video uh, if you want to work with me, you know, through Bold Zebras. Always happy to help. And hit me up on uh, Twitter at Chains Cows or leave a comment down below and uh, we'll hang out. All right. Thanks and have a great day.